Hello everyone. I'm going to try to keep this video shorter than last time, but thank you. I want to say thank you for all of your excellent contributions to the discussion forums this week. A lot of really good discussion, a lot of really good points. In the first forum, are women more ethical as leaders than men? A lot of excellent points. There are some of you who said, well, it kind of depends on the situation, uh, that in a situation where the leader is responsible for driving profits and driving production. It may be that that men may be better at that than women, that women are more focused on relationships and building company culture and and uh, uh, and cohesion. And I think there's there's uh, there's a lot of truth to that. I think that that's one of the places where it turns out that by traditional ethical standards, men end up with uh, a lot more problems than women. And I'll post a link to, um, to an article that talks about a few studies where they you know, did studies with groups of men and women and put them in, uh, in situations where they had the choice whether to act ethically or not. And uh, in a lot of cases, the, the men did not perform as well as women on very simple, simple ethical things like don't lie. That's a, that's a pretty basic rule, but uh, if it was gonna drive, it was, if it was gonna drive their profits, if their interests were gonna be benefited by lying, men were a lot more likely to lie than women. And uh, I think that that's, that's a big argument in favor of the fact that in favor of the of the opinion that women are more ethical than men in a lot of cases uh some of you talked about um some women ceos who were terribly unethical uh who who lied or who um you know misrepresented their companies and there are obviously examples like that i mean <laughs> women do lie it's not that uh, it's not that women never lie and men always lie and it's not that men are always driven by profit and women are never driven by profit. Like any kind of uh, generalization, there are always, always exceptions to the rule. We do have uh, more examples of unethical male CEOs than unethical female CEOs. Part of that might be that, uh, that there are so many more men CEOs than women CEOs. Uh, I don't know what the percentages are. I don't know if there's ever really been a study about of how many CEOs there are, how many of them are men, how many of them are women, and how many of each have gotten in trouble ethically or legally, and what's the percentage? Uh, you know, what, how is the how does the percentage compare? I don't know if anybody's ever done a study like that. But even if you did have those numbers, and it was shown that, you know male CEOs are unethical at 32% and women CEOs are unethical at 30% and say, well, see, they're just about the same. The, there's still a problem there because it may be that women who are willing to act unethically are more likely to succeed in the present business model. So they act more like men than most women, if that, if that makes sense. It's a tough, it's a really tough question to answer specifically about the ethics of leaders because the way our current climate still is, it's biased toward men being promoted into positions of leadership. So it, there's that uncertainty factor of, well, is it, if men and women are acting the same in leadership, is it because the culture of leadership is still skewed toward a, a male way of doing things? Um, but some of us also talked about the fact that men and women tend to look at, at ethics differently. And I think that that's true. Again, it's a generalization. It's not that every single man is, uh, practices ethics from a juridical perspective and every single woman practices ethics from a care perspective. That's clearly not true, but predominantly, predominantly men follow a juridical ethics, in other words, a rule-based ethics, and they want to follow the rules, follow the principles, and they're primarily concerned about how those, how those rules affect them, and that's the, that's the primary consideration. 
Whereas for um, for women, it's it's an ethics of care. They're concerned about relationships. They're concerned with connections between people and with preserving those connections. And they're a lot more likely to look at context than uh, than men do in a lot of situations. And uh, Carol Gilligan's work, I, I, as I said in the in the discussion forum, I'm a little bit biased. I think uh, I think Dr. Gilligan is is brilliant and I really appreciate her work, but I think that uh, it's valid you know, that she has some really good points and talks about how uh, women's ways of knowing uh, generally do differ from men's ways of knowing, especially in, in ethical areas. The other forum about uh, ethical dilemmas and in, uh, in an organization, who, which group uh, should we consider uh, to have priority, if there is an ethical dilemma, do we do we give priority to the employees? Do we give priority to the investors? Do we give priority to, if we're talking about a nonprofit, to the donors or the clients? Uh, do we give priority to um, the customers? And a lot of really, a lot of really great discussion. There were some people who felt that uh, you know the the customers were the people that always deserve the priority or the employees were the people who always deserve the priority because without employees without nurturing your employees without treating them well without being honest with them it doesn't work the business can't function if you don't treat those people well and i would say that uh some of us also said that there there has to be uh, a balance among the among the groups that there are some situations in which Clearly, we have to be most concerned about the employees. And there are other situations in which clearly we would need to be more concerned about the customers or, or the clients. And there were a variety of examples in the, in the discussion forums. But I think uh, one way to look at this and one way to think about who might be the, the group that deserves the most priority is Who's the most vulnerable in this situation? Who are the people that that are going to lose the most, or who have the most to lose? So, if you're looking at a at a situation, say with a uh, with a nonprofit, say we have a a homeless shelter, and of course we have donors who support that homeless shelter, and the organization has some responsibility to them. It has responsibility to use their funds wisely. It has responsibility to uh, be transparent in, in what they're doing. Um, but the, the organization also has a great deal of obligation to the people that they serve, to the, to the, to the people struggling with homelessness who live in the shelter. That's, that's the reason that they exist. Their mission is to serve those people and to and to provide them with space so that they can so that they can get back on their feet so that they can perhaps find employment again and, and be in their own apartments in their own homes at some point in the future in that organization too there's responsibility to employees that those employees should be should be fairly compensated that they shouldn't be expected to work for substandard wages just because they're working for a nonprofit that is helping uh, those who are struggling with homelessness. So there's all three of those, there's all three of those sets of, of, um, of obligations. But in that equation, I would say the people who are most vulnerable, the people who have the most to lose are the clients, those people that are struggling with homelessness. So in any kind of, in any kind of situation where there is a where there is a question of uh, how are we spending our money or we have a budget shortfall or anything like that, I think looking at, okay, how does it affect the clients is the first, is the first question in trying, to solve, in trying to solve the problem. That's, uh, you know, that's, that's the way that I look at it. If you look at it a different way, I'd be interested to, uh, to hear what you have to say. Again, a lot of, um, a lot of great discussion, and I am keeping this one under 10 minutes, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to our discussions next week. Thank you.